those that don't want the ultimate good for themselves and for society do so because they don't know any better. Marcus has not only political power, but wisdom. And in that respect, he's the only example in the Western tradition of any ruler who even remotely approximates Plato's philosopher king. And he has some of the qualities that Plato thought the philosopher king would have. He is totally disdainful of wealth. Why? He owns everything. What would it be like to own everything from England to Egypt? Well, the idea of accumulating more stuff becomes less and less interesting if you stop and think about it. And if you can have sex with, say, a million people, the million at first has very limited attraction. And at that point, he stops to think and he says, I will do my best to constantly do what I ought to do. And there is a sort of whistling in the graveyard tone to this book. He is, in some respects, an enormously lonely man, and in some respects, an enormously sad man. There's a melancholy in this that's terrifically moving. And yet, we ought not to pity Marcus Aurelius, because if he looked at our lives, he would pity us. Pathetic creatures that we are, we don't even meet his standard of virtue, and we're pitying him. Think about the irony of that. He said, well, I'd pity you back if I didn't think that was disrespectful. Think about what it takes to be something like Marcus Aurelius. We shall not see his like again. In the book itself, he has all kinds of intriguing and caustic, if you will, moral maxims. He says things like this. Soon you will have forgotten all things, and soon all things will have forgotten you. In other words, don't get overwrought. You're angry with this guy just because he didn't do what he was supposed to do? Ask yourself how many of the people that are working for you are doing what they're supposed to do. Soon, you'll have forgotten all this, because you'll be dead. And soon, all the people who know you, they're going to be dead too, and they'll have forgotten you. And so what's the point of being mean to people? Now imagine the kind of philosophical self-restraint we're talking about here. This is a guy who can chop everyone's head off if he gets sufficiently angry, so he never does. Remarkable, remarkable. So Marcus Aurelius is a man who constantly, in his book, is writing short one and two line epigrams that essentially say things like, don't lose your temper with these people, Marcus. You know how they are. <laughs> Marcus, it's not your fault that they're stupid. You tried to teach them, and you can keep on trying to teach them. But if Socrates was a good man and they killed him, what do you expect them to do to you? On the other hand, Marcus Aurelius is willing to rule the Roman Empire for the same reason that the Platonic philosopher King is. If he gives up, Somebody worse is going to take the job, and you know what happens then, right? He'd much rather just go home and read his books. He doesn't want to listen to this stuff. But he says, well, the gods put me here. I didn't ask for this job, but I can't very well give it up. I'd be abdicating my responsibility to other people. Imagine the bad laws and bad emperors were going to get after me. Well, should I give the job up now or stand here until the gods are good enough to relieve me of my post? In fact, that's the metaphor he uses all the time. The gods have put you on guard over the Roman Empire. Everyone else is sleeping. Stay where you are and stay awake, elsewise God knows what's going to happen. Marcus Aurelius is constantly whistling his way through the graveyard, trying to tell him that this is a very happy life, that he loves being a philosopher, and he particularly loves the particular portion of reality the gods have assigned to him. Now, I think that everyone believes this except the people that read this book, which perhaps is why it wasn't supposed to be published, because when you look at this, you see a terrifically lonely man, a man of immense moral heroism, who has no shoulder to cry on.